All right, so we're here uh, on this new portion, this new segment called The Scoop, talking to Cadell King, linebacker from Quopio Steelers. Cadell, welcome, man. Thank you, man. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, it's, it's good to have you on. Oh, we, we really want to get to know you a little bit here before we get into any specifics about the season. Give us a, a quick, you know, history summary of your, your background in the sport and how you got here to Quopio. Uh, so in our whole football history or just this year? From just last couple of years or something. You know, give us a, the yeah. quick journey. I played here, I went there, et cetera. Okay, so um, I obviously played in Bristol Academy in Pride uh, in the UK, um, one of the best academies in Europe. Uh, then I went over to Canada, played one year prep school, three years university. After that, I went to Potsdam Royals in the GFL 1 North. After that, I went to GFO one staff to pay for Frankfurt University. Starting to pay for Frankfurt again this year, but we're quarantined and GFO catching this season. Uh, core POC that gave me opportunity to come down to the major league and play. So that's how I, I, I came here. That's awesome. See, that's traveling. That's the best thing. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you a, a, a question about the travel you had. Because you're, you're from the UK and you've been going to these different countries and now you're in Finland. Yeah. I haven't been here long enough to really, you know, have a take on it. So we have to ask you later in the season how you like Finland. But you. my my question to you would be is with American football being, you know, not a major sport, how did do, how does it feel to be able to, you know, travel to play this game and, you know, make a little bit of money on the side, but how does it feel to be able to do this as something that you that you love and internationally? It's a blessing, really. Um, from when I left the UK and went to Canada, it really opened my eyes because it's like, you see a different culture, you know? So like in the UK, it's not, it's definitely not a big thing. When I left, um, no one's really played it. My friends were like, what are you doing? Going to Canada, it was completely a culture change. So like, even in college, people come up to me. They like know who you are. They know how you play the game. They like, you're a great game. My first, my first, second homecoming, Alumni coming down to me, knowing my name, saying you're a great game. So seeing like the different coaches and how they appreciate football is really giving me like a more appreciate appreciative view of it. Um, it's obviously a blessing to come back to Europe, play in the GFL in Finland. GFL obviously teams like Potsdam, who came up who are an upcoming team, came up from GFL two at the time. The fan base wasn't as strong as it was in Frankfurt, but like seeing the different fans and how they engage with everyone. The Purple family were obviously great. Even in Kuopio, like my first day, I met like three fans who knew me, who knew me by name. You know, so it's really a blessing. I appreciate it a lot. Kill, you got something for him? Yeah, um, it's, it's more about, uh, like, I, like you said, you're from the UK. Um, over the years in Europe, a lot of players have came um, from the UK. Uh, how does that make you feel personally to, uh, to be able to to represent the UK in, a, in this like American sport. I mean, uh, you, you guys are considered EU imports, but um, sometimes I think a lot of the UK players are, are more closer to an American import than a, you know, foreign, like that, that you, you know, EU yeah. import. So how does it feel to you to be compared, you know, to uh, closely being related to like being an American import? It is. I want to say is uh, I'm happy about that, but like in the UK with borders, like the UK has borders everywhere. Only thing is that the coaching and the love for the game isn't up there. So I can name you like borders at the top of my head. Um, David, who played in Finland before, Glenn, who played up in Dresden, Ellie played up in Potsdam. So we have borders, but it's just getting them out and giving them opportunity to ball. Even Kojo played up in Helsinki for a couple of years. Um, when you guys say we're closely related to American imports, I truly believe that Tim came up, played uh, for Crocodiles and Helsinki. Every time I hear about Tim, he's a baller. Even after the game, yes, they at Butchers, I had some of the players come up to me, asking me where I'm from the state. So like the UK has talent, we just need to look there and trust them more. Because I feel like the biggest issue in Europe is they don't trust the UK players a lot. Because obviously the talent level goes from great to terrible, because it's not a professional league, right? But the more players like myself, 
David, Glenn, Kojo, Tim who come out and ball out, the more respect we're going to give the UK and the more players are going to go out and prove that you're the best ballers in my eyes are from the UK. So mm-hmm. once we keep balling out and showing what we, what we have, and hopefully one day we start representing GB's national team, we can change the whole culture in the UK. Yeah, let me just throw out there some some of that Finnish pride, you know. Yeah. Hey, the uh, UK, they know what happened with the national team games, buddy. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, <laughs> what happened? Oh, yeah, Sue on me. T-I-S. Yes. Hey, we got to represent for the whole team. Hey, <laughs> like, the, the, the issue with the, with the GB team is, like, the ballers don't play for GB. I was on that man. team. Uh... Tim wasn't in that team, Kojo wasn't in that team, you know, so like the bowlers are either in the States in the NFL, shout out to Tiggy, Alex Jenkins, mm-hmm. Christian Wade, or that at D1, I know a couple of Blitz guys at D1, Orlando, Victor's at D1, or there's like me and I don't want to risk it because I know the yeah. level of the GB team is up there, you know? Because yeah. I would have hated to play for GB, God forbid something bad happens. And I know we're not competitive enough at the moment to compete, you know, so it won't be a smart business decision on my end. But I've been speaking to the new head coach, I've been speaking to a couple of guys, shout out to X Nose, and hopefully we change the culture and we can get more guys to play for GB, like myself. Because again, like if they had me, they had Glenn, they had David, they had Tim, like Finley wouldn't have been enough, man. Hey, and hey, I, hey. I'm I'm we don't talk about yeah. hypotheticals. Who won? Don't be talking hey, about hypotheticals, I'm though. Hey, we got to represent. <laughs> Can't be talking about hypotheticals. And I understand you, though. And actually, that's something I want to ask you about, too, if you're okay with talking about it. I know there's a lot of politics involved in sports, especially oh, yeah. in the UK. But one thing that I've noticed, and Q probably have noticed it, too, like we said, we've seen ballers. And like you said, we've seen ballers come from the UK. And the biggest issue we've seen is when you watch like football in the UK, it is horrible. It looks bad. Like it's just yeah. not something that anyone wants to be a part of, including the ballers that are there. And then you yeah. get these situations where guys like you don't even want to play on a national team. What, what do you think is going to take to, you know, get that whole baffle situation or the UK football organization? Like you guys need to, I mean, like you said, the UK has some of the best players in Europe, but it's hard to to highlight that if everyone's one scattered on all these different teams or they don't even yeah. play in the UK because it's not taken seriously enough in their home country. So what's yeah. something you think that needs to happen so we can, you know, have you guys represent? Yeah, I think, so it has to start with Baffer. Uh, during the quarantine, I was speaking to the... Um, new CEO of Baffer and he has a plan in, the, in he has a plan to like help change the culture the guy goes to the head coach of GB similar situation um, and it's like we still have to have faith and trust the process you know mm-hmm. because again we're not doing it people of my age and my era right now so Ray shout to Ray killing it in D1 um, we have to do it not for ourselves but for the younger generation coming up you know, so it has to be all of us coming together and understanding that the sport's bigger than just us right now. Because if we go on GB right now and we start kidding it, we won't personally benefit from it a lot, right? But the kids coming up who are watching us play, who are going to be going to be inspired by us, are gonna that's gonna change how they're perceived by Europe and how they perceive the game. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So. Yeah. Again, just all of us making sacrifices just to improve the, fo- the game of football. Q, you have something else for him? I, I said I like two more questions, and then we let you get no, out. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, okay. okay. So what I was going to ask you was about, if I'm not mistaken, you were at that um, the F the Standard camp a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. F yeah. Standard. Tell tell us about that. How did you like that camp, and what was happening in Denmark, man? That camp was dope, man. Shout out to Desmond Cooper for hosting the camp. Um, that camp was dope. Like they had like crazy. They had a lot of kids out there. Um, a lot of them were Danish kids from Prague, Amsterdam. But it was a great experience. It was like my first time coaching outside of um, like my team. So usually I coach for my college team, 
or I'll coach um, the younger teams in the GFL, right? But it's my first time meeting a camp coaching kids. And it was a crazy experience, man. Like, the kids were ready to learn. They were boarders. Um, and it just showed the love for the game in Denmark. Because I never knew, like, Denmark liked the game like that, you know? Yeah. But, like, these kids knew what they were doing. You correct them, they would learn like that. I had, like, two linebackers from Amsterdam, right, who came down. And those those guys, like, they would be able to play in the, in the Maple League or even in GFL at 17. Like, maybe physically they weren't up there, but they could move, they knew what they were doing, and they were easy to coach, you know? So, that camp was dope. Desmond Cooper has a dope setup. He has a great plan. Like, he, I got changed in the culture from Desmond Cooper, you know? Like, you he's go. a great, yeah, he's a great mentor. He, like, he's setting the new standard of how we should develop football in Europe, you know? And that camp was, like, one of the first of many to come, so. Hopefully we can hold one down in maybe Finland, in the UK, in different parts of Europe. So, oh, oh yeah, that's not for the podcast. But so what you're saying is AFF should probably have a camp in Finland. Is that is that what we should do, Q? Is that what we should do? Definitely should. Definitely hey, should. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hit me up, man. We'll we'll see. We'll see what we can do. You know, maybe maybe we let the AFF All Stars coach a camp or something after the season. Huh? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Hey, do it, there. man. It could happen, right? It could happen. <laughs> do it, man. Because, like, for me, like, I'm 24, and when I was coming up to play football, we have camps in Europe, right? I was one of the kids who could afford to fly out to the state and be in front of coaches, right? So, obviously, a lot of times I got overlooked. Having camps like this, and seeing, like, for them, seeing people like me, um, Nana, Desmond Cooper, Willie, you know, that's going to inspire them, like, Yo, I can do this too. Yep. You know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, I had, I told myself I'm not playing Europe because I didn't know those ballers in Europe. Mm. So I like, it was either your states or done. Like yep. states Canada or I'm done. And a lot of my friends too, the same way states Canada are done. They see me playing out in Europe, they're like, yo, there's football in Europe? It's good? You know, so <laughs> like, them being able to see this and like giving them like, okay, football doesn't just stop at states are done or just stuff at D1. You know, because right now we have like the CFL combine coming coming up. We have the NFL pathway program. So there's multiple routes going. And a lot of the kids who uh, got picked up by the NFL combine didn't go to D1. Tiggy yeah. didn't go to D1. The uh, Swalker running back didn't go to D1. You know what I'm saying? The CFL combine, a lot of the guys who got picked up weren't D1 kids. Yeah. They all played in Europe. Some of them went to UK universities, went the GFR route, you know? So like, one thing that I keep comparing Europe to is Europe's our Juco. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's, so a, good, that's they, a good comparison. I, I never thought about they, that, but yeah. Yeah, they go. They don't go D1, they go Juco route. We can go the GFL route. We can go the European route, the Maple League route. Maple League route, you heard it. You the me? Maple League route. So <laughs> like, the more camps we have, and the more we expose these kids to yo, the different ways to keep playing football, you know what I'm saying? the more the sport's gonna grow. Because I know so many kid guys over the years who I've started with. I'm like, for my team in Bristol, I'm like one of the only guys, I'm the only guy still playing football. So I'm to the States, right? And that's because I did my own research. You know, I have a thing where I have multiple plans. So I have my plan A, B, and C, you know? They always say, don't have a plan B, but I, you have to have a plan B. Yeah. I didn't go D1, I knew. You have a Panda or Juco. You know what I'm saying? They didn't go D1, I took the Canadian route straight away. So like, mm. you kids need to understand, yo, I may not go D1, not because of I'm not good enough, I have the intangibles, just because sometimes life don't go that way, right? Mm -hmm. There's routes in Europe. You can go to university in Europe, go GFL route, go to Maple Bowl route, Maple League route, my bad. Maple League like, route, there you yeah. go. There's camps. There'll be camps that they're holding. Like, Polian and Beat are doing camps. That's how a lot of the UK ballers got to Europe. You know what I'm saying? So the more camps we have, the more training and the more we invest into the youth, the bigger the sport's going to get. That's it, man. Look, that's it. Uh, you said everything we need to say, Cadell King. It was good talking to you today and just getting a, get a little bit of understanding of your mindset on the sport. And like you said, it 
nowhere to go but up from here, man. This sport is good and yeah. great. And it's good to have you on. We appreciate it. And wish you the best of luck in your next Thank football you. game coming up and everything else football-wise for you, man. Thank you. Quick question, though. Oh, go ahead. Corpio Theaters or Helsinki Wolverines? Let me hear it. Uh, I'm going to hold you guys to this. Now. I'm going to come out with all your stuff, man. Uh, <laughs> um... Just he asking us on Sunday. We don't make our picks till like Thursday. I, hey, we don't make I, our picks I wanna know right now, man. I gotta read the injury reports. I gotta do my data analysis. I gotta see, analysis. I gotta yeah. see who's not playing, who the new players. <laughs> oh man. Hey, you know, where, where y'all playing? Y'all playing Coopia, right? We're playing Coopia, the home game, first home game of the season. I'm going with Steelers. Oh. I, Wolverines ain't won there since like 2002. Oh. Hey, you you about to be fear knowing your predictions, man. Let me hear yeah. it. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. Don't tell anybody until we hey, put them out. But we'll put I got them on you. this first. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Well, I'm going to stay neutral at the second, at this moment. <laughs> I'm going to go Steelers because I'm already all in. So you can let hey, me know. I think respect, Steelers. Man. I'm all respect. in yeah. Steelers. <laughs> all hey, right, man. Well, <laughs> if y'all vote against us, it's going to be in your comment section. Like, nice picks again, man. Just know that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they stay in the comments when we wrong. No. I said that on the show earlier. They stay in the comments when we wrong, man. But all right, we got to let you get out of here. It's good talking to all you, right. man. Thank uh, you, man. Take it easy. We appreciate you giving us this time, and, and good luck yeah. to you guys this weekend. Yeah, good luck, man. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you, man. Have a good, have a good week, guys. Um,